Welcome back to the channel, everyone. This is video number six in the Wayne Scott series. If you missed the last video, we made this window stool right here and we made it in such manner that it would accommodate our Wayne Scott build. I went really in depth in that video and I'll link that in the description below along with all the videos from this series in a playlist. So go ahead and check that out. Now today we're gonna to be casing this window and I'm gonna to try to get it all done in one day. But the way this has been going, it's uh, taken a little bit longer than I expected. And this time of year, like I mentioned, is pretty much a race against the sunset. So we'll see what we can do. I'm just making these videos really in depth. I'm sharing with you all the deep and dark, well, not dark secrets, but I'm just trying to go in depth and share with you all the, the tips that I have. So thank you for being here and I hope you find value in these videos. One other thing I'll address before we get started is the comment that comes up of why don't I protect the floors? Well, the simple fact is this is my own house and I have the freedom not to protect my floors. So hopefully you can understand that. These are kind of rustic floors. And if I drop a hammer on them or something, I'm the one that has to live with it. Some may say it's careless, but hey, again, it's my house. I'm gonna do what I want. Also, the people who comment, this guy's a hack, he doesn't protect the floors. This guy sucks, he doesn't know what he's doing, he doesn't protect the floors. Why, when I go to your channel, it's a bunch of Taylor Swift videos and your likes? And I have the problem, huh? Now, when it comes to this stool right here, when I install it, I don't wanna have it where it's just sitting right on the rough seal under there. I wanna have it where it's elevated up a little bit and we have a gap between the stool and the seal. The reason for that is because any moisture that might come through and get through these windows is going to pull up on that rough seal and then the wood will absorb it. And you'll see this often, it'll be a puffed up window stool. You'll see this start to crack or if it's MDF, it'll just puff up, it'll look really weird. And that's why we're gonna have a gap between these two surfaces. Now, for me to get this level, since I'm building this as one unit, what I've done is I set my laser up over here and I've already got it set up to the height that I want. And I'm just gonna turn that on and then we'll go take a look at where that line is. So that line is exactly where I want my stool to sit. So we're gonna raise it up to there. Now there's an old caulking line under here. You can kind of see it right there. I'm gonna scrape that off as best I can and then we're gonna have the stool set right there. But remember, I'm building this in one unit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the stool and I'm gonna measure from the top of that window jam up there all the way down to this laser line right here. And that'll be the dimension for this left side of this window jam right here for the inside jam that I'm gonna make. And that will ensure that this stool is level. So we'll get this stool out of the way for now. Then I'm gonna shoot my tape measure up to the top of the jam here and then get a reading right where the laser is. So it looks like I'm about 57 and a half right there. So we got 57 and a half again. Now for the header jam, what I'm gonna do is just measure from inside jam to inside jam and then take a 16th off of whatever measurement I get. If you remember on the stool from the last video, I had a little bit of play. I didn't want it just super tight because again, I'm gonna keep saying this, when I'm putting this up in one piece, I want to have a little bit of play. Not a whole lot because we wanna keep reveals the same everywhere, but I want a little bit of play. So whatever I measure here, we're gonna take a 16th off. Now the two measurements that I just took with the laser line, we're actually gonna take three quarters off those because the header jam is gonna go up here like this and then those leg jams are gonna go into it like that. So they'll be minus this material thickness, which is three quarters. Next thing we're gonna do is grab our combination square and we're gonna use it in the same manner that we did in the last video. We're gonna put this square edge against the wall. Then we're gonna push the ruler in until it touches the window, tighten this knob right here. And then it's gonna give us a dimension right here. Whatever this dimension is, that's how wide we need to make our jam legs. Now I will tell you, don't just get one reading and run with it because windows are some of the wackiest things as far as tolerances and more than likely the inside jam leg is not gonna be just one width the whole run of it. So I'm gonna check mine out and we'll see how good mine is and if it's wacky, which it probably is, then we'll handle it. And it looks like we are right at 
four and a half exactly. One other thing you may or may not have noticed is when I put this flat here, this drywall inside this jam tapers off to the right like that. It's not perfectly straight like that. It has a slight taper, meaning this corner right here is not a perfect 90. Now this is why I like to do this in one unit because that's not even gonna matter when I nail all my stuff together. There's just gonna be a voided space back there. It's not gonna bother me at all versus if I just nailed a board to this jam and just expected it to be perfect, then I would be in trouble when it came to where it meets the header jam. So what I'm gonna do here is get multiple readings. Four and a half, four and a half, four and seven sixteenths, four and three eighths, four and three eighths. So you see how if you would just take one reading and just rip your board down to, let's say four and a half, that means up here my casing would be sticking proud off the drywall an eighth of an inch. And I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do now is, I've gotta handle this one a little bit differently, but I do wanna get readings on the header jam and on that other jam leg over there. And if they're doing the same thing as this one, where they're just tapering off in one direction, then what I'm gonna do is put a board in here that's oversized and then just use the, the wall here as a scribe line and take a pencil and just scribe, scribe it like that. And then I can just cut that and I can make it just custom fit to right here. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention before I move on is in these corners, they have a lot of caulking here. And if you just put a straight board against that, you can see right there, it's not really letting me be flush against the window. So what I do is I cut a 30 degree angle on the jam boards. You can see that right there. And that'll allow me to bypass that caulking so I can get a flush surface against that window. And you can see right there, the caulking is in the corner and it doesn't matter at all because no material is touching it. That's always a good thing to do because you don't wanna have it where it's just that far away. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous right there. So keep that in mind. All these inside jam boards will get that treatment. All right, so I'm gonna put a spacer block up in where this header jam would be so I can get this scribed. Now I can bring my actual piece in that I just ripped on the table saw, push it against the window, and then scribe the back of it. And I'll hold it up against that header jam simulator right there. I just gotta cut right on that line and it should be good. Then we can rip these other jams. So now all I gotta do is rip down these four and three eighths, I believe they were, on the table saw for the header jam and that other jam leg over there. But it's happening again, it's so early. It's like five o'clock and the sun is already setting. So I might have to pick this up tomorrow. It's the next day here and just got off work. So I'm gonna to try to get some of this stuff put together. I just cut this header jam right here and I cut this on a table saw. It did not require the scribe like how I scribed this using that track saw. And I got the left jam leg cut, which also did not need any modifications. So I'm gonna make sure this thing fits in here. And that's good. And this has about a 16th of play in it. You can kind of hear that little side-to-side -side action there. That's perfect because I want to be able to slide this in and then I can nail it in place. So now that I have all these components cut for the inside jam, I can screw them together and screw them to the stool. But before I do that, there's one other cut I need to make on the stool and we're going to take care of that right now. And that is going to be cutting a notch out right out of here, out of this corner.
So see if you can make more sense of this now that I have it cut. So we have our stool with our notch cut out right there. And that will sit right on that pencil line. And then we'll have our casing, which is screwed into the stool from the bottom, sit up against there. And then we'll have our jam board right there. So that's what we're working with right there. And the reason I cut that notch out is so I can put this window unit in after I've already got the Wayne Scott unit installed to the wall. All right, now that I have those notches cut on the horns of the stool, what I can do is go ahead and assemble this whole system here. So I can take this jam board and screw it into the stool and I can screw it into the header up there and this will all be one piece we can pop in. So I'm gonna do that now and I'm gonna do that with pocket holes. You could do it just with finished nails, that'd be fine. Um, you could do it with wood screws from underneath into the um, leg jams. But I'm just gonna use pocket holes, just less of a chance to split in my experience. And I'm not gonna use any glue because I'm not even gonna get really a good bond surface between these primered surfaces and I'm, I'm not gonna sand it down and try to glue it. It's just kind of redundant. The pocket holes are gonna be plenty strong to hold this thing over the years. So this is a unique pocket hole jig right here. It's a Porter Cable one, they stopped making it. I wanna say I would have recommended it. It's not even available now, so it kinda of doesn't matter, but it's like a love-hate with this thing. It has a lot of cheap components on it. And if they would have like beefed it up a little bit more and gave it some stronger components, it would have been a really good machine because it's just one clamp, you release it, and then you can push it onto any size of material up to like an inch and a half, I believe. And then the bushing on the bit, you don't ever have to move it. So it's pretty cool, but it's a little cheapy. You're supposed to push it down. And then this little foot down here like hits the material to tell you when to stop or it stops on its own. But I just push this down because it's kind of weird. It likes to wander. It doesn't give you the cleanest pocket holes, but it's really good for just quick pocket holes that are never going to be seen. Like I said, not the cleanest pocket holes from this tool, but you can get a lot done quickly, and if they're not gonna be seen, it doesn't even matter. So there we have our two pocket holes right there, and that's plenty strong to hold this window jam unit together, especially once I get the other sides on, or the other side and then the header on but I'll just crank these down a little bit more. It's good. Do the other one and then the header. So there we have it. We have our window stool and jam assembly put together and it feels good. Next step is going to be to dry fit it in its place and make sure it fits before we cut the casing for it. If it fits, then we'll go ahead and cut the casing, but all that will be done in the next video because once again, the sun is going down and I'm losing light. And I'll see you on the next video in this series. Take care.